So we got a lot of questions about Bernice's signature engine and its free to play alternatives. So here at the new Eridu research division, we're gonna do a couple of tests that will hopefully answer all of your questions and in turn either quell the FOMO or incite it to levels yet to have been seen before. So let's check it out. Bernice's engine, the Flame Maker Shaker, is an anomaly engine that gives attack 30% at level 60 and its passive is a whole wall of text, which boils down to the following. When you're off field, Bernice regenerates 0.6 energy per second. When you hit an enemy with either an EX special or your off-field afterburn attack, which is considered an assist attack, you gain a 3.5% damage increase, stacking up to 10 times. However, while you're off-field, the stack effect is doubled. This takes it to a massive 70% bonus damage while off-field. And then if that wasn't enough, if you're sitting at five stacks or more, you also gain a 50 anomaly proficiency bonus. So even though you're running an attack engine, you're really only down 40 AP compared to those other S rank AP engines. Each stack of the engine lasts for six seconds and can trigger every 0.3 seconds. Each trigger refreshes the duration. So what this means is that with how rapidly Bernice applies damage with her flamethrowers, you will max this out in just over a second. And thanks to the off field procs refreshing the duration, you'll be able to keep this buff up 100% of the time, as long as you keep your Scorch debuff going 100% of the time. But then that brings up the question, how easy is it to keep 100% uptime on Scorch? Is this locked behind that 0.6 energy per second that they're selling us with this engine? That was hands down my biggest fear when I saw this weapon. The quality of life of being able to maintain your off-field procs, being locked behind a signature engine is the nightmare of every free to play player. So let's get that answer, shall we? And what better way to get an actual answer than to simply do some live field testing ourselves. What I want to do is perform two fights using a proper Bernice team. In the first run, I'm going to be running Bernice with her signature engine, and my goal during that fight is to make sure that I have Scorch up 100% of the time. If it ever does drop off, then my Bernice needs to have enough energy to reapply it comfortably without ever needing to wait around for energy. Now, we know that this is more than likely going to be the case with our signature engine test, but we can use that as a baseline. Then we're going to slap on an engine without any energy regen on it, and we're going to see if we struggle with rotations at any point during that very same fight. The team that I chose to run is quite an expensive team, but it is the premier Jane team that a lot of people are interested in. Bernice, Caesar, and Jane, the premier anomaly disorder team. With how much this team costs to get, I'm going to be glad to save some pools on that signature weapon if it turns out that I can. All right, so we start the fight with Bernice and she starts with a full heat meter, so we don't need to use our EX to get it up. So I just drop a quick one tap of the EX before defensive assisting into Caesar. With Caesar, we're going to be getting our shields while throwing out two shield bashes, which gets us pretty close to stun. All the while, the fire anomaly is building up in the background and we're aiming to pop the disorder right as the stun procs for some mega damage. And bang, there it is, 800k. Now I'm sitting at 80% energy and my heat gauge is on half, so we throw out the double flames to build it back up. This happens pretty quickly, so I defensive assist the next blow to bring back on Caesar, so we can build up a little bit more stun. My aim here is to land another disorder proc on the stun, but it looks like we're building burn up a little bit too fast here, so it does go off early, but that's alright since we still end up with a pretty decent 800k crit. So while this is all happening, what I'm constantly doing is eyeing Bernice's heat gauge, and here I notice that it's about to go out, so I look for a defensive assist to get her back in. When Bernice does a defensive assist follow up, we're able to press and hold EX special and she'll cancel right into double flames the moment that the assist animation finishes. So during this invulnerable phase here, I take advantage of this body here and I build my Jane's meter back up to full. My Bernice heat gauge is still looking good and she still has 50% energy, so we're going to be fine for at least two more rotations. The thing with building Jane's meter though is that we were spending Bernice's heat, so once again I look for the defensive assist to top up that heat. I get topped up really fast and I wait for the assist but it just doesn't come, so I do a naked switch into Caesar. I'm expecting a number of hits here for me to parry, but the boss decides that he's not going to play long today and decides to jump away instead. So as we chase him down, I'm looking at my Bernice's energy, and she's still on half heat and half energy, so we should be good to chase down the stun. I'm expecting the burn to trigger on the tail end of the heat mid expiring, and the boss is pretty close to getting stunned, so I'm hoping it all lines up and we get a big boom. So here we do get the stun, but unfortunately I do trigger the disorder off of the burn, so we barely got 130k. But a few seconds later, bang, we do get a 750k disorder to finish things off. So the reason why this is, is because triggering it with the burn clears the flinch and applies a fresh burn on the boss. And because we already had quite a bit of physical anomaly saved up, it didn't take us too long to clear that burn and trigger the disorder with the assault. And here are the results. 1 minute and 47 seconds with a Bernice using her signature engine.
So the takeaway from all of this is that we never once came close to running out of energy for Bernice's heat gauge. We had Scorch up 100% of the time and we never once had any trouble topping up our heat meter. But now here's the real test. How does an A rank engine compare? In the second run, I used a lip gloss engine. Now, I know that this isn't a free to play engine since it does come from the battle pass, but the point still stands. We're testing uptime for Scorch with these runs, so any engine can fill the slot here. And so this next battle is really a lot of the same thing in terms of my decision making, so I won't go over what I already said. Instead, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been helping to support the channel by subbing, liking, and commenting on my stuff. This is a series that I set up to do tests on things on the Creator Experience server that others tend to skip over. I feel like we get more than enough character kit videos from the program, so moving forward I'll probably will do less of that, as there's already so many good kit breakdown videos out there. And instead, I'll do stuff like this and listen to your comments on what you want tested. This new Erudy Research Division series of videos is only possible thanks to you guys who have helped get me into the Creator Experience server program. So once again, a big thanks to everyone who's helped support the channel. Alright, so for anyone who wasn't watching intently, here's a breakdown on exactly how many times I ran out of energy and had to wait to get my heat meter back up in this fight. Zero. It was zero times. At the end of the phase one of the boss, I did let the Scorch drop off as I was focusing on finishing him off, but my Bernice was sitting on full energy, so at any time I could have just easily maxed out my heat again, which I did shortly after. But in terms of ever being energy starved, it just straight up never happened. And this is kind of mind blowing to me. I was expecting to maybe be forced to run an energy D6 at the very least, with the selling point of the signature engine being that you could go without, but no. No regen on the engine, no regen on the D6, and we were fine. It's not even the case of being okay thanks to conservative play, we just straight up used the same rotations with zero energy problems. So I think we can safely say that Bernice doesn't suffer from energy issues without her signature, at least when played as an off-field sub DPS on a Jane team. But what happens if we decide to spend more field time on her? The thing about Jane teams is that Jane is notorious for being a field hog. She's able to stay on field for as long as she wants, while still dishing out consistent damage. What happens if we bring in Piper, a character who does a lot when she has energy, but is near useless when she's out of energy? This would force our Bernice to pick up the slack and spend more time on field. I wanted to see if this would affect her energy, and so I gave it a shot. I went with an M6 Piper running a 2-2-2 set of Freedom Blues, Fanged Metal and Chaos Jazz, She's also running a P5 copy of her signature engine. In the support slot, I have an M6 Lucy, rocking 4-piece Swing Jazz and 2-piece Chaos Jazz, and also her P5 signature. And for our Bernice, we're going to be rocking our P1 Lip Gloss loadout. So this team is a really good free-to-play friendly team that will be available to a lot of you. Both Piper and Lucy will be featured in version 1.2, and we also get a free Lucy this patch as well. They work really well together, with all three characters interacting with each other while off-field, which is really nice to see. M6 Lucy's Boar Meteors proc incredibly fast from both Bernice and Piper's EX specials, so you're getting both the procs from Bernice's Afterburn, along with the damage and anomaly buildup from the boars. When running this team, the biggest factor that will affect your DPS is going to be Piper's energy management, as she really struggles to deal damage without her EX spin. When running this team, the best play is going to have Piper go after Lucy, you want this for two reasons, the most obvious being the attack buff that Lucy provides being passed straight over to Piper to take advantage of, but it's also the ultimate usage. Using ultimate on Lucy is the recommended play in this team comp, as it grants the next character a large amount of energy. 
Using this interaction and switching over to Piper after Lucy uses her ultimate is a great way to keep Piper's energy levels restocked. And so I'll let you guys watch the rest of the fight. Remember, we're paying attention to the heat meter and Bernice's energy. Our goal is to see whether or not we ever struggle with energy at any point during this fight. I think we're looking pretty good here approaching the tail end of the fight. No energy issues yet out of Bernice. Here I tossed out an ultimate from Lucy with the goal of then switching over to Piper to funnel her energy but instead I proc the stun and accidentally funnel to Bernice instead. So we end up not having enough energy right at the end on Piper so it's a slightly awkward finish but hey, 2 minutes and 8 seconds. Not bad for a free to play team. Just as a refresher. On our premium team of 3 limited characters and 3 signature engines, we finished in 1 minute and 47 seconds. Swapping out Bernice's engine lost us 10 seconds and we finished in 1 minute and 57 seconds. But amazingly enough, going to a full free to play team and losing Jane and Caesar only took us back another 11 seconds. 2 minutes and 8 seconds clear time is pretty respectable and it was pretty fun to play as well. And now lastly, just so that we can say that we truly covered all bases, we're going to run a true on-field hyper carry Bernice along with two supports, M6 Lucy and M6 Nicole. With this team, Bernice is going to be on-field for the longest durations out of all of our previous teams, and what we'll be doing is using her highest motion value on-field attack, which is her charged basic attack. This attack uses the heat gauge, so instead of spending the heat gauge on afterburns like we did in the previous runs, we're going to be spending that on her charged attacks. This charge attack does more damage than her entire basic attack string combined, so we're just going to be spamming it over and over again, and it also cancels directly into double flamethrowers as well, so we'll do that whenever we get low on heat to recharge our heat meter back up. Both the charge attack and double flamethrowers have a ton of interrupt resist. In fact, I don't think you can get knocked out of it at all. And because the bulk of the damage is from that final hit, we're going to be simply face tanking moves to ensure that we get as much damage out as we can. My Bernice in this clip is running a lip gloss engine, so let's see if she runs into any energy issues while spamming those flamethrowers and charge attacks while on field. Okay, so approaching the end of the fight here, as we can see, zero energy issues. I think we can categorically agree now that whether or not you're playing an off-field sub DPS Bernice or an on-field hyper carry Bernice, no rotation is locked behind that energy per second passive of her signature engine. This run we did in 2 minutes 16 seconds, the slowest of the bunch, but it probably could have been cleaned up a little bit to shave off a few more seconds. That said though, this is far from an optimal team, and I would consider Hypercarry on-field Bernice to be nothing more than just a fun meme team at this point in time. 
All right, so we came to the conclusion that the energy portion doesn't mean much, but what about the damage? Well, it's pretty safe to say that you're going to be doing more damage with the signature, but let's see if that's going to be a significant amount. I wanted to test three engines, the signature, then the best A rank alternative, which will be the lip gloss, and then our free to play alternative, which is the craftable weeping Gemini. The reason that I picked these two A-rank engines is that they're the only two engines that we can fully make use of when playing Bernice as an off-field sub-DPS. Grace's engine, the Fusion Compiler, along with the A-rank Rainforest Gourmet and Piper's signature, Roaring Raid, all have far too short of an uptime duration, which makes them pretty pointless as by the time we swap out Bernice, you're barely getting 5-6 to six seconds of buff time on her afterburns. The Electro Lip Gloss grants its buffs as long as there are enemies on the field with an attribute anomaly on them which should be almost always when running a double anomaly team with Bernice. And then the Weeping Gemini, while pretty bad against smaller enemies, has a fairly solid uptime against bosses, so we can expect to see some decent burn and disorder numbers when using it. So the way that I wanted to go about this is to test for afterburn damage, since that's what the signature engine is going to buff primarily, as it does provide double bonuses when Bernice is off field. We'll be using a full anomaly build Bernice, so we don't need to factor in crits, this means that we can take the afterburn tick damage and multiply it by 13 procs to get our total afterburn damage. We're also going to trigger a burn effect with each weapon as well, just so that we can calculate the total damage from a burn proc. We can do this by taking the damage of a single tick and multiplying it by 26 ticks. Anyway, I'm not going to make you guys sit through all that testing, so here are my results. And let's break it down. It comes as no surprise that the signature engine nets us the best damage. I set the P1 lip gloss as the 100% baseline as that's the best value weapon for Bernice. And based on that, you're looking at a fairly substantial 30% increase in damage when running the signature engine. That said though, if you buy the battle pass every time, you might end up with a P5 lip gloss, which does take that gap down to just 17.6%. The Weeping Gemini at P5 does beat out the P5 lip gloss though when running at max stacks due to how much anomaly it gives. That said though, with how the Gemini works, you're not always going to be sitting at max stacks as you would need to trigger an anomaly on the enemy four times before it does cap out. And it does reset once the enemy recovers from a stun or gets defeated. When that happens, we can see that the Gemini drops down significantly to 79% of a P1 lip gloss. In comparison, a lip gloss engine will have that buff up as long as there is an enemy on the field that is affected by an anomaly effect. So what are my closing thoughts? Well, personally, I'm one of those people who don't really care much for bigger numbers. Unless it's a very substantial increase, I'm talking well over 30%, which the signature does give when compared to a P1 lip gloss. I am, however, a battle pass purchaser, so I can see the lip gloss hitting P5 for me in the near future. So the value proposition of the signature is no longer as big when we're talking about just a 15-16% to 16 increase. For me, what I value in a signature engine is utility and quality of life. If it makes the character more fun to play, or less annoying to hit rotations, or provides more flexibility in gearing or team comps, then I'm all over it. But as we saw from our test, that just isn't what Bernice's signature engine is providing. I was so sure that Bernice would be an energy hungry character that would definitely need her signature engine to play comfortably, but I'm very glad that I'm wrong. I'm still going to drop some pools for her signature, simply because it's just what I like to do, but win or lose, it's no skin off my back.